This monster is the Brabus 900 XLP, and it's the kind of vehicle your eight-year-old self will have dreamt you'd be driving when you were finally a grown-up. You know, back when you were a kid and you had no concept of the value of money or how much things actually cost. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk you through what exactly Brabus has done to a G-Wagon to create this nutty machine. I'm going to talk you around the exterior, the interior, the chassis upgrades, and of course, the engine, because it's got a lot of power. Obviously, I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour, because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching cars. Oh, wow. And I think I better get off this merry-go-round before I feel a little bit sick. Car? Wow! The most obvious thing about the Brabus 900 XLP is that it's a pickup. They took a normal G-Class, cut off the back end, and fitted a flat low bed. This bodywork actually is made out of carbon fibre as well. Part of the reason for that is that they wanted to keep the weight down because they've added a lot of extra weight by fitting extra length to the chassis, but also because Brabus just likes working with carbon fibre. And you can tell that because there's so much exposed carbon fibre all over this truck. Look, absolutely everywhere you go, there is carbon fibre and some fake vents. Yeah, enough about that. Probably also notice that it's got raised suspension. This thing sits with 49 centimetres of ground clearance. The normal G-Wagon, 21 centimetres. That's a massive lift. And it really makes this car, sorry, truck, look imposing. You've got massive wheels as well with off-road tyres. These are 22-inch alloy wheels. They're forged. They're this special off-road toughened wheel, and you can only get them on the 900. Brakes, same as a standard G-Wagon, though Brabus have put their logo on the caliper. Look at this thing. It is a monster. And then there's the exhaust, which is also shrouded in carbon fibre. And there's something extra special about this, which I'll show you in a bit. Here at the back, it very much has the feel of a G-Wagon in terms of the contours in the bodywork. But obviously, it's a pickup. And lots of exposed carbon fibre there with a the Brabus logo there, Brabus logo on the carbon fibre handle for the tailgate. You've got carbon fibre down here as well. You've got your 900 logo designation here. But one thing I've noticed is this, look, big vintage. Hmm. And here as well. Tell you what though, this rear bumper is super high up. It's just, <laughs> it just makes this vehicle look nuts. Here at the front, you've got this huge carbon fibre power dome there. It does absolutely nothing other than look aggressive. Look, fake vents. And then you've got the big Brabus logo here and an even bigger one here. They've reworked the grill, so it's got this carbon fibre surround. Then you have little carbon fibre stripes at this part here with red on them. Moving down, you've got the bumper, which is similar to the design of the normal G-Wagon, but it's made wider because obviously it's got to flow into these extended wheel arches. And you've got carbon fibre down there in this bit here and in the lower part of the bumper. And of course, an electronically controlled winch that can tow up to 4.5 tonnes, which is really, really handy when you're driving around Knightsbridge. Here on the inside, Brabus has completely retrimmed the G-Wagon. So all the leather and on the seats, you'll see they've got this shell design with perforations of different size. And obviously you've got heated and cooling like you can get on the normal G-Wagon. This also has a plaque there to signify that it's a Brabus masterpiece. And you've got Brabus embossing to the headrest and they're very, very soft and squidgy. Also up here, look, the sun visor, it has an embossed pattern. Attention to detail or what? And you've got an Alcantara roof plus carbon fiber. What do you call these things? Crap handles. Why did I not know that? I said it a thousand times. Carbon fibre grab handles. Basically, the idea is that everything that you touch just feels a little bit more expensive than in a standard G-Wagon. And everything that was chrome in a standard G-Wagon has now been spray painted this sort of chromey red, which is really cool. And it's absolutely everywhere on all what would have been metallic looking switches. They've even painted the pedals. Then there's carbon fibre here. And obviously with an AMG, you can get carbon fibre, but Brabus has its own style of carbon fibre with a slightly fatter pattern. Various logos about the place. You've got Adventure XLP there. You've got this Brabus tag just hanging there for some reason. You've got the Brabus logo on the kick plate, which is carbon fibre. And then there's like a little badge that you get on a G-Wagon on this pillar here, which Brabus have put their own one on. Another change they've made is to take out the IWC clock from the G-Wagon and replace it with the Panerai clock because Brabus work with Panerai. They've also changed the dials ever so slightly. So it says Brabus on them here and the speed goes up to 300 kilometers an hour. Although this car can't do 300 kilometers an hour. Another change is carbon fiber for the shifter paddles and really nice expensive leather on the steering wheel. Has a little Brabus logo there as well. And something else I need to show you is this, look. Look in the footwell. It's all leather, quilted leather no less. And you've got partially leather mats. If you want, you can have fully leather mats, but these have carpet on them as well because someone who's gonna buy this car might sometimes, maybe, possibly, actually won't at all go off road, but hey. Even inside here, Brabus has trimmed it with leather. In this case, red. 
when you put your hand in you feel a bit like a gynecologist there's also the controls for the winch the front light bar and the rear light bar which would be really handy if someone's tailgating you you can just do that to them make them back off probably shouldn't do that here in the back is pretty much the same as in the front in the way that it's completely retrimmed with this leather everywhere on the floor yet again and with the partial leather floor mats the red chrome over the items that would have been just kind of silver chrome in the standard car even over the speakers which is really nice carbon fiber but in the roof there is this leather panel with that embossed pattern that you get on the sun visors in the front and then this this bank of gauges when i say gauges you've got a speedometer there which goes up to 240 kilometers an hour which is not the same as the 300 kilometers an hour that the driver sees anyway there's also another clock there and a temperature gauge in terms of the seat back here it's the same as in the normal g-class and the amount of room you get is the same even though the body's extended they haven't extended the actual cabin area what you can do though is upgrade the rear seating to two captain's chairs so you basically get the front seats which are standard g-class seats obviously retrimmed here in the back with a center console with like a work table and stuff like that this one's just got the rear infotainment system with the fattest bezels of any screen they look a bit old-fashioned they should upgrade those so then can you guess how much this brabus 900 xlp is worth have a think about it now before i reveal the true price do you want to find out how much your car is really worth if you do want to find out just click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to go to car wow you can just upload some photos of your car give a brief description then our dealers will bid on your car if you want to sell your car to them you can just accept the highest offer if you don't you can just do it to find out the service is completely free if you want to do it at a later date after watching this video just simply google help me car wow it will help you find the true value for your car okay so this thing the value of this it's around seven hundred thousand pounds so you're getting a lot more than just the design upgrades i've talked you through at the back unlike with a normal pickup when you have a fold down tailgate you have a g-wagon style side hinge tailgate <laughs> which means that the door opens really wide. I'm not sure that's entirely practical, but it does mean that you can get closer to the low bed like this because there's no tailgate getting in your way. And then you're greeted by this lovely soft teak, which is what Brabus put on their boats. Yes, they tune boats as well. If you're wondering why it's like discolored here, it's because this part's wet and it hasn't dried out. And that's just how it goes when it gets water on it. Also at the back, you can see this big rear window, which comes from a standard G-Wagon. They've just inserted it there into their own rear panel. Also, if I just nip around the side, I'll show you there's this little area with a locked safe where you can keep things here. Oops. <laughs> oh dear, you didn't see that. I ain't seen nothing. And that's the control for the winch in there. Other features that you've got include, look, there's some airplane style runners there which you can tie things down to in fact you can get some upgrades such as fuel cans which you can fit in the back and the spare wheel which affixes in the load bed there i did actually ask the chap that i've been speaking to at brabus about what was the payload you know the dimensions key things that pickup buyers want to know he didn't know the figures off the top of his head only said that you know it can actually carry some heavy things reason being most people don't want to know people who buy these vehicles never use them really as pickups this truck is really all about the show one of the biggest changes that Brabus has done is to the engine. So normally you have a four litre twin turbo V8, which puts out 585 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque. But Brabus has brought it out to a 4.5 litre, changed the internals, changed the turbos, worked on the air intake, the exhaust system, all that kind of stuff, fitted a piggyback ECU, and now they've got 900 horsepower. In fact, on this rather lovely red carbon fiber engine cover, you can see the power curve there with the 900. This engine can put out 1,250 newton meters of torque, but they've brought it back down to 1050 newton meters because it makes the vehicle more drivable other major changes are to the chassis so as with a normal g-wagon you have a rigid rear axle however everything you see in red is completely new on the brabus so you've got portal axles and what that means is that you have offset drive shaft so the drive shaft goes through the diff there and then the gears take it down to the wheel and that gives you so much more ground clearance massive upgrade same too with the dampers much thicker much stronger and they're electronically controlled as well obviously you've got the extended ladder frame chassis for the low bed you also get underbody protection heavy duty stuff there and then here yeah, again at the front you have the portal axles for the improved ground clearance and these control arms they are milled from solid aluminium for extra strength it's completely nuts obviously you've got a wider track as well you've got more underbody protection here at the front which is where you do need it it's insane what they've done to this vehicle however fully specced the brabus 900 xlp can weigh up to 3.7 tons which means you actually need a proper truck license in order to drive it on the road in germany 
And that brings us up to five or nine things about this monster. If you're not very tall, you can struggle to shut the bonnet. I thought I was average height. My girlfriend always said I was a bit short. She almost didn't go out with me because of it. Anyway, <laughs> if you're a bit vertically challenged like me and you buy a truck like this, you're gonna have to employ somebody to shut the bonnet for you. So Niels, can you do the job, please? I'm embarrassed. Because of the chunky off-road tyres, the top speed of the Brabus 900 XLP is limited to 130 miles an hour, which is 25 miles an hour less than the normal G63. And like with quite a few other pickups, there's no step system to help you get into the low bed, so... <clears throat> yeah. uh, I have to sort of get in like that. No more short gags, all right? I'm, I'm like five foot 10, which is average. There's a weird looking circular cutout in the middle of the tailgate. Reason is that hides the reversing camera. So when you do that, it pops out. But yeah, when you're not reversing, it just looks like a weird bit of trip. The sunroof is rendered completely useless because you can't see out of it. However, that brings around to five cool things about the Brabus 900 XLP. This flat roof rack gives you a great viewing platform so you can stand on it. Actually, you can get a tent which you can mount on here and sleep in. The normal G63's rear doors open about this wide, but Brabus have made them open wider for the XLP. Look, it's almost 90 degrees. The exhaust tips have inbuilt heat resistant LEDs so that when you turn the ignition on, they illuminate. It's one of 10. There'll only be 10 of these ever made. You can get bits and bobs of it, like some of the features and the add-ons fitted to other cars through Brabus, but if you want the whole thing like this, only one in 10. Because this truck is so high, you have some electrically fold out running boards like that to give you a step up. And I love the intricate detail on them. Just feel solid. They go away again once you shut the door. Okay, now I'm gonna take the Brabus 900 XLP out for a drive. But first I've got to get out the studio at Brabus headquarters and it's gonna be a bit tricky. And once I've managed to get through this little gap, I've then got to drive through their classic car showroom Shut up. Hopefully I won't hit any of the classics. Because uh, they're rather expensive. Just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got out there. Oh, this bit's easy. But what's not going to be so easy is getting through this blooming door. Because <laughs> this is so wide. I'm not convinced. They seem convinced I'm not so. It's their car. No, no. I'm going to have to get a different angle. Uh, mustn't reverse into the pagoda behind me or the cameraman. <laughs> He's moving his legs. Okay, is this angle correct? We shall find out. Okay, wheel straight. They're not telling me whether it's okay. Is it okay? Maybe if I just floor it, the car will go thinner. I'm not enjoying this. Why are we doing this? I'm just going to keep on going. Ah, ah. You happy? You happy? This is it. This is the end. This is, ah, oh. ah, oh, I made it out. Hey, the turning circle's not as bad as I thought. I didn't think I'd make it around there. Do you know what I want to do now to de-stress? I want to launch it. Okay, so this is stressful as well. Probably say I can launch the car and the place I suggested is this car park and it's raining and it's not too far to the fence. They reckon the car will hit 60 before I have to brake and I will have enough space to brake before the fence. Though the guy that did it before did it in the dry. I'm worried, but I'm also Matt Watson from Carwow, which means I have to launch this car to see just how close I can get to the claim, not to 60 time of 4.4 seconds. Got my specialist timing gear down here. This could be a brown trouser moment, but here goes. Not my fault if I crash it, Brabus. You said it's doable. I'm not convinced. Brake, brake, please, brake, brake, brake. Huh. You heard the bangs then? That was me braking as I go through like drains across the, the car park. The suspension took it, it didn't shake too badly, and hopefully the wheels aren't dented because there's a lot of energy going through them. But I can tell you what, did not 60 in 4.3 seconds. <gasps> And it is something that is now definitely 100% less stressful, okay? Now let's take this thing on the Autobahn, which, uh, oh, looks stationary, perfect. 
Would I be able to push in? Will they let me in? Or will they just think, oh, <laughs> Got to be aware of the extra length hanging out my back end so I don't I accidentally just cut across someone and cause some damage. You know what? I'm pretty much satisfied. No, I'm not. I was going to satisfy the truck drivers. <laughs> I just realised, no, I'm not. Here's someone in a motorhome. Am I sat as high as them? Yeah, hello. Hello. All right. Hello, yeah. Look at that, yeah. 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 Uh. That's the most pathetic noise. That's not the noise a motoring journalist should be making. I suppose now that I'm just driving along, I should give you a normal review of what this is like on the motorway. Well, the suspension, I thought it'd be terrible. It's not awful. It doesn't ride quite as well as a normal G-Wagon because of those poor axles and the big knobbly tires. And sometimes when you hit a series of bumps, you get like this shaking sensation like you're sat on a washing machine. The noise though, there doesn't seem to be any more road noise or wind noise than in a normal G-Wagon. Though that could just be due to the fact that any noise is being drowned out by the rain. Steering though, yeah. You do have to make constant little corrections to keep the truck in lane. And that gets a little bit tiring after a while. Also, there's the economy, right? This thing's averaging 20 litres per 100 kilometres, which converts to 40 miles per gallon. It's thirsty. Now let's see what this big beast is like to drive around town. Uh, uh. Oh, it's a bit lumpy over the bumps. Oh, can I get around this corner? Oh, this looks like it should be pedestrianised. Hopefully it's not. I'm following the car in front. And oh, look. <laughs> Hello. Uh. <laughs> oh, that was a bit nerve wracking. Like breathed in. <laughs> I don't know how that was going to help the car. I thought I was going to clip wing mirrors. I think we're in the posh part now of Dusseldorf. Look at my huge penis extension. Oh, better catch the lights. This is a long truck. Right, we're entering the zone with all the posh shops, so we must get some form of attention here. Hello, people. Don't make me honk my horn. Don't make me put on my lights. Definitely gonna have to put on my lights. There we go, hello. Yeah, look, yeah. We're we getting some attention now. Oh yeah, I'm a baller. Yeah, guys, you know it. That's more like it. Look, we've got AMG GTR, we've got a Lamborghini Urus. Look how pathetic and kind of subdued the Urus looks compared to this. Ha! Uh, uh, um. It's such a wide road and I'm like really <laughs> concerned about scuffing the wheels. All right, well, do you know what? Let's just stop at this rather posh hotel. Can I make a U-turn around this tree or is it going to get embarrassing? Come on, come on, should I put my nose straight through this shop window? Am I going to make it? No. I'm not going to risk that. You can just see that bit with the winch just protruding. Right, I think we're done. Oh, what a machine this is. It's got the performance, it's got the looks. It's utterly crazy and very unique, one in 10. If you can afford one of these things, you're going to enjoy having it.